All right, another variation that again is a little step harder than what you've done, but nothing in terms of how you approach it is different. Um, so I'm going to start with my ice chart. Taking my moles, 1.5, divided by my liters will get me my initial molarity of N2O4. That can go here in my ice chart. I'm not given a value for NO2, so I will say it's zero to start. The side with zero, I'm going to make positive. The other side becomes negative. And since I don't have equilibrium values, I just write expressions here. 0.25 minus x and 0 plus 2x. I can set up my KC by doing products over reactants. Um, I know that my KC is equal to 3. That was given. Products. It's really important you have these parentheses here, knowing that that whole thing is squared over reactants. And at this point, on the problems you've done so far, you're used to having both the numerator and the de denominator be squared, so you could square root both sides. We can't do that here because our denominator is not squared. So square rooting is not an option. Um, we kind of just have to use the quadratic. If you want to factor or do something else, go for it. I just always use the quadratic equation, which I will always give you. You just have to know how to use it. So before I get there, let me just erase this so you can see better what I have, what I'm working with. This is what I have. Um, I can always put over one and cross multiply, which is a good idea to start. The reason I stress these parentheses that all of NO2 is squared is because people forget that the 2, the square, also goes to the 2. So 2 squared is 4, x squared is x squared, times 1, cross multiplying, equals 3 times 0.25 minus x, and this 3 I will have to distribute. Now I'm going to gather everything onto one side of the equal sign. Um, personally, I like moving everything where the x squared is, but ultimately I want this equal to zero. So I'm going to add the 3x over and subtract the 0.75 over, and now it equals zero. So again, however you want to choose to solve this for x, you can. I'm always going to give you the quadratic equation, which is negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I'm going to switch markers. Now, the number in front of my x squared, including if it were positive or negative, that's my a. The number in front of my x, including if it's positive or negative, is my b. And the number that doesn't have an x, including the positive or negative, is my c. So negative b is negative 3 plus or minus the square root of b squared, again my b is 3, minus 4 times a, which is 4, times c, which is negative 0.75, all over 2 times a. I'm going to erase this. Um, what I recommend doing in terms of simplifying this correctly is simplify what's under the square root first and then, and the denominator, and then keep going. So negative 3 plus or minus, in my calculator I'm going to type 3 squared minus 4 times 4 times negative 0 0.75, 21, all over 2 times 4, which is 8. So from here, plus or minus means I'm going to have to do this twice, once with a plus sign, once with a minus sign, and I'm going to get two answers for x. So the first one, negative 3 plus the square root of 21. I like to press equals at this point, negative 3 plus the square root of 21 equals, and then I press divide by 8, and I get 0.198. 
and negative 3 minus the square root of 21, press equals, then divide by 8, negative 0.948. Now, again, in the last video, I told you, I think it was the last video, negative x's are okay. Sometimes the negative one is the one we want. Um, how we know which one we want is when we plug them back in, we need positive equilibrium values. So don't rule this out just because it's negative. Only one of these, one of our x's, when plugged into the equilibrium row, will get us all positive answers. That's what we want. In this case, because of how I set it up, because I put the plus sign on the right side, if I plug in a negative number here, multiplying it by 2, it's still going to be negative. So this isn't going to work out because I'll end up with negative equilibrium values. However, 0.198, or if you want to just round it up to 0.2, when I plug 0.2 in here, I would get 0.4. When I plug 0.2 in there, 0.25 minus 0.2 gets me 0.05. I have two positive values for equilibrium for my reactants and my products, so we're good. The answer to A and 204 equilibrium is 0.05. The answer to B, percent turned to product, again, of the 0.25 that could have reacted, it seems like 0.2 is what actually reacted, given that I was left with 0.05. So to do this, I did 0.25 minus 0.2. And then I multiply by 100. So 0.2 over 0.25. gets me 80%. Um, if the math freaks you out, remember most of the points are not for solving. It's for, can you get to the get to what you're going to plug into the quadratic? Um, and then it would be separate points for actually plugging it in and the answer. So don't give up.